Hello, my name is Olga Bozanova, and welcome to our class. Today we will paint a picture. It will be a waterfall, flowing water, sunny weather. You can take any canvas that suits your proportions. I took a canvas 50 by 80, but a canvas 40 by 60, 30 by 40, or any elongated form. First, I will show you the paints that I will use. These are oil paints. You can use acrylic, but acrylic paints need to be squeezed onto the palette in a smaller amount so that it doesn't dry out. I use white, any white paint will do. Cadmium yellow light. You can use any yellow color. Cadmium red light. You can also use any red color. Mars orange, kynacridone violet pink, can be replaced with any pink, for example, magenta or any cold pink. Blue FC, grass green, you can use any green color, but not too bright. Green FC, Indigo, you can replace it with black paint. I also use thinner. You can use any thinner that exists for oil painting. In the first layer, I apply a thinner to the canvas so that the canvas does not dry out. If your primer strongly repeals paint, you cannot wet it. Let's start doing the right markup. I take a beveled brush, thinner, a little blue FC, and outline the line where the waterfall will end. We outline the place where the waterfall will flow and a large number of different surfaces. If we divide the canvas into three parts, then this part that we have outlined will be on one third of the canvas. Leave a small space at the top and go down. In this part, which is shifted to the right, there will be a waterfall. The waterfall is shifted to the right because this way to composition will look more interesting. There will be sky. This markup is enough. I take the white and thinner and sketch the color here. Done. We take a little yellow and make a smooth transition to yellow.
and gradually the transition to red. Gentle pink shades are obtained. Now we take red and brown and move on. Now I take blue and red and white. It turns out a muted lila gray color. We paint over the shade here this upper part. In the first layer of the painting, it is very important to use a small amount of paint. I take a wet napkin, fold it like this, dip it in thinner, take white and add a little bit of blue paint. And with touches we create distant plants. Air has color, and in our picture the air has a blue tint. And some pink shades. This cadmium red, light and warm shade. You need this color to be very gentle. I take white and quite a bit of pink and make such a movement from top to bottom. Each time we wipe the brush, as I do in the video, we get the sun's rise in the background. Before each touch of the brush with the canvas, I wipe the brush, because only a clean brush can do this effect. Then I stretch the blue shades with the same brush. On the right side we have a tree. I take brown and dark blue and we get pale wood. The brush should be held like this, bristles down. Then you will get thin long branches. Now we take a fan brush, blue, yellow and a little generic paint. and create foliage in this area. You can add some green. The fan brush shows the direction of the branches. Now we take a yellow 
white, grassy green, and building brush. We create lightness and airiness of the foliage. From this side, the foliage is lit by the sun. The next piece. We take the napkin again. Deep into the solvent, take indigo, pink, and white. On the previous paint layer, Add more shades. First with a napkin, then soften the transition with a brush. A few more branches through brown and indigo. Now we take several identical round brushes. It is better to take three or four of them. We put the pile in one length. Take the green FC and yellow. And we create strokes. With several brushes, the movements turn out to be more natural. With one brush, we correct it so that it is neat. Now we need to paint over the entire background. To do this, I take indigo and brown. I close the left part through brown colors with a thin layer without whitewash. I remove excess paint with a napkin. This area through cadmium red and indigo. We go from top to bottom. 
this section through the grassy green, we will need it. Brown, pink and indigo. Neatly darking. We take a solvent, indigo and brown. And with a napkin, we create roughness and irregularities. Here are the main stones. Now our task is to make underpainting on the water. I take green FC, blue FC and white. It turns out a bright color, blue, a little green and white. Don't try too hard, you need to paint over this whole part. We will work with shades a little later. Paint it over this area and you need to let it dry. Now we will write a distant plan. I take yellow, dark green and some white. I'm working with a construction brush now, loose bristless. With the edge of the brush we create a texture. On the left side a little more white. There will be waterfalls here. We need to be down very carefully and for this you can use a fan brush. The waterfalls will not be pure white. We will add blue paint to the white. In the background we see a flowing waterfall. Do not take a lot of paint, take more thinner. A multi-stage waterfall.
a little called yellow and green shades with the addition of white. In this area, through pink and white, we create moisture. Excess paint can be removed with a napkin. Now an important point. Rays fall on this piece and the rays cover the previous color. Now I take two thin brushes, white, yellow and a little pink. grassy green and yellow. On the left side there is a lot of greening. On top we have a tree, but before that we need to work a little more. I take a construction brush, white, a little red and yellow. White and pink over green. A little more pink and white. Dark green as a shadow. Pinkish with white on top is light. red and a little yellow. Grassy green and dark shades, we restore this part. There will be a tree here. Before that, we take green of sea, grassy green, indigo and solvent. Yellow and green of sea on top of these shadows. We made
bright greens, a little blue, yellow and orange. We draw several three trunks, brown and indigo, the trunks go up. Add a little yellow to make the color lighter. Some more dark shades. Now we take round thin brushes. Dark green and dark blue. Lighter on the right side, darker on the left side. Create full edge. Grassy green, indigo and blue. The crown of the tree will be very sunny. Small dark elements. Dark blue and white. 
add picturesqueness to the picture. For this, we must use cool blue. Now we move on to the central part. I take a small fan brush and add thicker strokes. Blue FC On top of the blue FC we add white Blue FC a little pink We make a sketch of the waterfall. Called pink and blue. Water flows here too. Finished. On top I put a little paint with a palette knife. A palette knife makes it possible to lay the paint unevenly. Alternating different method of applying paint makes it possible to better convey the feeling of flowing water. Now I take a large fan brush Done. Through red and white in this part we write plants. Very light. White, yellow and pink. With a construction brush, we create softness and radiance of the waterfall.
It turns out a very light part. Here is yellow, green, but mostly white. Overlap this part. Take a napkin, grassy green and a little red. Finished. We take a white Slightly green of C. With the edge of the brush, do not close the dark areas. Add this color only to the light areas. We take a fan brush. white and pink. The direction of the branches turns out to be softer and more directed. We got a big piece of the bill. In this part, we create the sunrise at the same angles as from above. And part of the waterfall need blue and purple shades. We do not overlap the brown background. We do everything carefully. A few more strokes. Shades of Shadows Pink and White There should be a bush here. Now we got a very overexposed right edge which is what we need. The next step is to make the texture of the stones through brown and red. We will make several stones. We take the paint so that it is liquid. This side and this side
Add cold blue and grassy green in the shadows. Add some plants right on the waterfall. There are very cold shadows in this area, so we can add some blue tints. Now we half way done. Now I will tell you something very interesting, especially for you. Hello! Welcome to Olga Bozanova's painting studio. Here you can plunge into the incredible world of painting and start painting in oils. Many different painting lessons from Olga Bozanova, a famous Russian artist, are waiting for you. All lessons are fully translated into English. In these tutorials you will find many different chapters, from seething seas to Dutch still lifes. All classes were filmed for you in high quality and with the presence of close-ups, where the smallest details are showing. Together with Olga you will paint truly beautiful pictures. See you at the courses! Follow the links that I will put under this video and now we will continue to paint our picture. Now I take a synthetic brush. You can use a flat or velvet brush and mark a few stones in the background. Through brown, through blue, pink, so that the stones are not too bright. In contrast to the wall on the right, this wall is shady. In sunlight we have cold shadows. We take brown, blue and red. The color should be natural, not too dark and not too light. In this way we emphasize the texture on the stones. No need to touch the canvas hard, then we will get the desired color. dark light, we convey a slight roughness. Finished. Here too, on convex stones. We take green FC and grassy green. Dark blue and a little white. There are also plants between the stones. Dark blue, P, 
pink and some white. Creating shadows on the left side of the waterfall. Finished. White, a little pink. A little blue tint. White and a little pink. We remove excess splashes and we get haze. We look at where we need to add con contrast to create even more deep. We take blue FC and indigo and darken the areas where we want to get contrast. We add more foliage to some areas, more cracks to some rocks. A few dark areas here and there. Cold shades, green FC and white. Add some shadows on the right side. Large construction brush through brown and blue. Create a muted gray tint. I do it on the right side to create more light in the middle part of the picture. Continue. A little movement on the waterfall. Each stone gives a new direction to the water. Brown is a tree. The tree comes up here. A little lighter shades on the trunk. Let's move on to these stones. These will be very interesting and textured stones. I take yellow, a little white, remove excess paint, a little pink. On top I will put some more paint. The grassy green is moss.
Next, a few stones in the background. But these stones almost merge with the waterfall. We pass to the bottom of the canvas. I take a thin brush and now I will paint stones here. We make this area very contrasting. I remove the excess paint. I take a palette knife. A little yellow, brown. And with the help of a palette knife, I create an incident light of the stones. Create horizontal stripes. I take white and put pure white paint on this area. We can use pure white here because this is the foreground. Water flows here and we also create it through whitewash and a palette knife. We take a little paint. We put the palette knife on the edge and lower the palette knife down without pressure. Now we take a fan brush and blue FC. Create in the direction of the water. We work only in the lower part. The stones must be visible through the water. Finished. Blue, lilac, white. Making water here, a huge amount of water. We add white very carefully so as not to lubricate the previous sections. Before each movement it is better to rinse the brush. Water should tend very naturally. A little purple Lots of solvent. Water should be foaming. We take blue, pink, And apply a blue tint here. Brown, yellow and red. We make ovals under water.
Remove excess paint with a napkin. Take orange and yellow. Make ledges. Remove excess paint. A little brown here. Blue FC and I give the direction of movement here. There should be a bright dark blue color here. We take a fan brush, white and blue. Carefully, all the water flows in this direction. We take whitewash and a palette knife and create water movements to the side. It turns out a lot of interesting movements, more brightness. Foam here and foam below. With blue FC. Blue FC and white. The closer to the foreground, the more paint we use. Here are a couple of movements that depict water. There are several stones here. Green FC and white. Give direction to the water. Take the pane and make these stripes. These stripes should overlap each other. Blue FC, Green FC. Alternate these shades, this is necessary. Now I am working on this part. I take white and carefully create water through a large amount of paint. Do not click on the brush so as not to overlap the previous paint layer.
add brightness if necessary here is a little blue FC. We take the blue FC a few last moments. And here we add brightness. Blue FC. Now whitewash. Now white with green FC. You need the paint to be very liquid. We take a construction or fan brush and make light movements. Try not to smear the highlights. We create softness and smoothness of transitions. Create ripples in the water. If somewhere too bright, the paint can be removed. We make the texture of the stones with the help of a palette knife. Plants on the stones. First, we create a large brush, then a green FC and a round brush. You can add blue FC and grassy green. Cold dark shades. And a few bright pieces through yellow and green FC. I will also put light on this stone through red and yellow. We make the leaves smaller. Sign this stone in further from us.
through brown and indigo make a hummock here. We create stones underwater. You can always add a light shade. Red and yellow. Now I am taking a lot of solvent, indigo and brown. Paint a small branch in the foreground. On this branch, I will make some leaves. It turns out a very sunny picture. The water is very bright. Through the green of sea and white, I will add the finishing touches on the water. On this we have finished our painting. If you want, you can add foam here. This can be done with a palette knife and splattering into the canvas with a fan brush. There are many ways to apply foam. You can choose the one that you like best. Dear friends, the next video is especially for you. You will be able to paint even better, improve in painting. Learn new oil painting techniques and get great pleasure from painting. Hello, welcome to Olga Bozanova's painting studio.
Here you can plunge into the incredible world of painting and start painting in oils. Many different painting lessons from Olga Bazanova, a famous Russian artist, are waiting for you. All lessons are fully translated into English. In these tutorials you will find many different chapters, from seething seas to Dutch still lifes. All classes were filmed for you in high quality and with the presence of close-ups, where the smallest details are showing. Together with Olga you will paint truly beautiful pictures. See you at the courses!